Mr. Baldinelli for six minutes, please. Thank you, Madam Chair and um, Minister. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. Uh, forgive me for not uh, joining in the chorus and singing uh, along with uh, your notion on uh, your liberal side of kumbaya. Instead, Minister, uh, during your time in office, your record is one of failure. Minister, sadly, under your watch, Mexico has now become the United States' biggest trading partner. No longer is it Canada. Minister, given your record, Canadians can be excused for harboring some concerns regarding your government's negotiating skills. Minister, you talked about standing up for Canada and Kuzma. Essentially, you were, ha you were presented a deal. The United States and Mexico had come to an agreement. It's either take it or leave it. That's what your stand had taken, Minister. Minister, despite Kuzma being negotiated, there's still issues such as rules of origin, dairy, steel and aluminum, digital services tax, forced labor, softwood, softwood for nine years now. We've had past witnesses testify that the U.S. is most likely to use this review to push its views on current trade disputes to obtain more favorable outcomes. How does Canada respond when the U.S. trade representative, Catherine Tide, has already indicated at a Brookings Institute event in March, the question is always going to be, do you have enough? Have you changed the leverage composition to get the political solution you need? Minister, how do you respond? Let me start with um, your contention that uh, that we took any deal. To the contrary, we wanted a good deal, and only a good deal for Canada. You might remember that uh, you and your colleagues uh, suggested that we just take any deal. We didn't do that. We protected dispute settlement. We protected the cultural um, industries, and we protected IP. That's what we did in renegotiating Kuzma. Today, it is and it continues to be a hallmark agreement to create competitiveness for our workers and for our people while fighting climate change and transitioning our economy so that they can be strong and creating jobs. The various issues that you raised are of course important ones and in a, you know, in a trade relationship that's nearly two trillion dollars, you would expect that there are issues and those issues are being dealt with. I'm happy to take, uh, you know, to answer each of them individually, but suffice it to say that uh, this is a, that in this review, the work that we need to do in all of my conversations with American businesses, with American labor, workers, Canadians, providing stability and certainty is what we must do because our competition Okay. is not in North America. It's what we need to strengthen in our well, competitiveness. Well, let me just build on that. One recent witness who appeared at the last hearing, Meredith Lilly from the Simon Reisman uh, Chair of International Economics at, at Carleton, she talked uh, about this review and taking a three-pronged approach. First, uh, the need to, uh, to be proactive, and that's why we're meeting here today. Need to demonstrate that, you know, the three parties, how the agreement is beneficial to all, including dispute settlement. And third, to address the elephant in the room, which is China. And the recent tariffs both the U.S. and the EU have undertaken. Canada needs to address Chinese overcapacity. Um, Minister, on May 14th, the U.S. acted and placed tariffs not only on steel and aluminum, but also on EVs uh, coming in from China. And then the EU responded again just as of yesterday. So why is it taking so, can uh, so long for Canada to respond and look into this matter? Canada has been at this matter from day one. And let me be clear to everyone here in this committee and to Canadians who are watching. Canada is not going to be a backdoor to the U.S. market or a dumping ground for unfairly traded goods. We've been very clear about that. Canada is committed to building a EV supply chain for the future of North America. Canada and the United States uh, have been building automobiles, automobiles for over 100 years. The auto sector is changing dramatically, um, but Canada is well positioned from critical minerals to batteries to the assembly and the production of electric vehicles. It's going to be made in Canada and we're going to protect our Canadian workers. We have... Minister, just building on that, if I could, then. So why is Ford, a um, motor company, said it's going to slow production of its EV production to 2027? The GM facility in my, my community, just next to my riding, has already indicated it's going to slow down the timing of its EV battery production. They're 300 
uh, employees that have been laid off. Their V6 line has already been torn out, and GM has made the decision that it's not ready to proceed. We've had uh, witnesses like Brian Kingston come forward saying there's a disconnect between this government's economic uh, environmental policies and its uh, investment policies. Uh, uh, and we're looking for alignment with what's going on in the United States, for example, in terms of the EV. So how is it that we can facilitate the growth of the, the EV market in Canada when we can't get a critical mineral mine built for 15 years? Our supply chain is not there, Minister. I mean, we're not getting sales by Canadians to buy EVs because of the cost is too high in this country. We're going to become a dumping ground for China, which has dominated the EV market. So how is it that we're going to respond to that? Well, I would like to talk up the Canadian economy on this side. and um, Tell and, that to the 300 and, workers who are now laid off well, at the GM we facility, a place that I used to work at, Minister. There's 300 people order, that are no longer order. working there. Point. No time left as it is. Point, point Minister, of order, if you'd like to Madam respond, Chair, I'm sorry. Yes. I just, we got to be mindful of the interpreters. We've already been through certain areas. If two people are talking at the same time, that's not good for interpreters. So I would ask that when questions are asked to the minister, that we let the minister respond and that we respect the folks that are interpreting for those that are uh, trying to have a conversation. Thank you very much for raising that issue. Uh, minister, I believe, pr turn the floor over to you. Sure. Um, it is precisely a plan for the environment that has created the billions of dollars of investment into the EV supply chain all the way from critical minerals to processing to the building of the batteries. I don't need to repeat uh, the, uh, the investments, whether it is from Stellantis or most recently with Honda or Volkswagen, uh, some of the most significant. Those batteries and those cars are going to be built in Canada, and it's going to create thousands upon thousands of jobs in Canada. And it isn't just uh, in the automobile uh, floor shop. It is going to be the entire value chain and supply chain, uh, which is what is also very exciting. The kinds of investments that are being made to make sure that workers in places like Windsor who were not seeing growth are now so excited. Uh, small businesses are growing. Um, workers and homes uh, are being built. It is exciting, and it is because of a plan on the environment, a plan to be able to build uh, electric vehicles and the investments that are here and that work is very well underway. 